gyno can be treated very easily. Warning! You're watching Dr. Todd Lee TV, where theoretically you could learn a bunch of cool shit. For those of you who don't know, gyno is a street for gynecomastia, which basically is also known as bitch tits, movies, we don't want them. And they're the primary concern of having estrogen that's too high. Most of you will be most interested in the fact that if your estrogen gets too low, your penis will get smaller. That aside from that, most guys don't need to hear anything else. That they don't want a smaller dick. Not everyone wants a bigger dick, but nobody wants a smaller dick. So, therefore, don't let your estrogen get too low. So a normal ratio I usually go by is 20 to 1. So if you have a 1,000 testosterone, this is on blood work, not what you're injecting. If your blood work test total testosterone is 1,000, then you're okay with a 50 estrogen. When that ratio starts to go to shit, you might start to see movies, gyno, bitch tits, appear. Now, what you might experience is tenderness on the nipples. You lean up against an inclined bench to do reverse flies or against to do reverse pec deck, and you can feel pain when your nipple touches the bench. This is bad because this pain usually it quirl, um, is associated with the gland swelling. That's from there being too much of input. Now, a lot of people are confused about this. I was. There's more than a, one input into breast gland growth. Estrogen is an input, GH is an input, IGF-1 is an input. So we kind of got a synergistic effect since the estrogen, one of the best benefits of the estrogen is it converts the GH into the IGF-1. If you've watched previous videos on this channel, you know about that. I'm not gonna delve into that right now. So by having an elevated estrogen and taking GH, you will also have an elevated IGF-1. All this feeds into gyno growth. Androgen receptor will be a negative signal. So it's not an inhibitor, it's actually a negative signal. That tamoxifen is a breast cancer medication and it is going to bind to the estrogen receptor and not be a competitive antagonist. It doesn't just prevent the estrogen from binding, prevent the estrogen from sending a positive signal. The tamoxifen on the breast tissue, it's a selective estrogen receptor modulator, meaning on different tissues, it does different things. On the breast tissue, it sends a negative signal. So by using tamoxifen, you can send two negative signals and trick the breast tissue. Now, you do not want to prophylactically use tamoxifen. Tamoxifen will stop the conversion of the GH to the IGF-1, which is the whole point of taking GH. And the whole point of taking testosterone is the estrogen because you want to convert the GH to the IGF-1. If we weren't going to fuck around with GH and IGF-1, we'd probably be better off running something like straight DHT or straight nandrolone. Please watch the nandrolone only video for more explanation. But the point of testosterone is it converts to the estrogen, and the point of the estrogen, if for the purposes of anabolics and growing, is converting the GH to IGF-1. That being said, we do not use tamoxifen willy-nilly. In fact, it is a weapon of last resort. If you're experiencing gyno, the wise choice would be to look back at your records. What dose was I on where I didn't have gyno? And so let's say if you didn't get blood work done. So like for instance, me, I know that at 80 estrogen, I wasn't experiencing gyno. At 120, I was. It would imply somewhere between 81 and 119 is a safe dose for me of estrogen. So I have to extrapolate how much test did it take to get to that. Now, what the irony was is that when I was stage ready using 400 milligrams of testosterone, I was cranking out 80 estradiol and I had no gyno. When I was post off season in a um, recovery phase or whatever, a maintenance phase, and my body fat percentage wasn't seven, it was more like 19, I had a 120 estrogen from the exact same amount of testosterone. So by having more fat cells, I could, had more aromatase enzyme and converted more testosterone to estrogen. So that means I have to have two different 
um, protocols for myself is what do I do off season when I come off of a push versus what do I do post show when I want to go into a health and recovery phase and I can what I can get away with in one I can't get away with in the other so that being said you know let's say you have a safe dose of testosterone and you were pushing the limit seeing what you could get away with and turns out what you pushed up to you couldn't get away with so let's just say Sam Schlittenkammer we're making someone up if your name's Sam Schlitt Schlittenkammer I'm sorry that this person that I made up is fictional any similarities it has to real people is unintentional so Sam Schlittenkammer is using 350 test for a year Let's say he's a very patient man, and his blood work shows that he's got an estradiol of 70, and he's got a testosterone of 1,400, so he's exactly 20 to 1 ratio. And then his girlfriend, ex-boyfriend, is like, dude, you're not a real man unless you use 500 tests. You're a bitch. So he wants to impress his girlfriend, so he does what his ex, her ex-boyfriend says and goes up to 500 testosterone, and then he starts growing bitch tits. After about a month, his girlfriend's like, your chest is starting to look like my ex-boyfriend's. It's kind of gross. And then he feels, and he's like, oh my god, I've got tender nipples. What do I do? And then he's going to rewatch this video rather than do it from memory because what I've learned is that nobody has any memory. So in this case, what you would do is A, roll back to what your safe doses were. So Sam will reduce his dose down to 350 again. And then he will do a short stint of 20 milligrams of tamoxifen twice a day. A lot of people are like, how long do you do that for? You do it until the gyno is gone. That this, to me, is so common sense, I'm appalled I have to actually answer that. So you do the tamoxifen until the gyno goes away, and then once, what do I do after the gyno goes away? Well, what you do after the gyno goes away is you stay at that safe dose, and you never go up to that 500 test again without running a DHT with it, because the DHT will act as aromatase inhibitor. And they're like, well, should I just take Letro or Extemisane or Arimidex? It's like, no, because that's going to fuck up your conversion to estrogen, and you need the estrogen to convert the GH into IGF-1. If you just take the Masteron or the Primo, you get the benefits of increasing your anabolic load without having to necessarily crush your IGF-1 conversion. It will diminish it to some degree, but you, once again, we want to keep, in the case of Sam, we want to keep Sam's E2 level, estradiol, at 70. And we can titrate up on the GH to get more IGF-1. And then if he's going to titrate up on gear usage, if he adds in DHT, it's going to reduce that E2. If he adds in testosterone, it's going to increase that E2. So you want to add in E2, you want to add in the DHT and the testosterone about equivalently from that point forward and then retest your blood a month or two later and see, okay, was I able to maintain the 70? Let's say Sam is at 500 test and 150 of E2, of uh, DHT. So let's say he's using exactly 490 and 140 because those are round numbers. You're like, no, they're not. Yes, they are. That if you're using 70 a day, of testosterone and 20 a day of a DHT like Mastron or if you're made of money primo then that comes out to 490 a week of the test and 140 a week of the DHT and then that should manage his E2 level so it stays at 70 obviously stay on the side of caution don't push the test and risk getting gyno because then you have to take a, a month or two off to shrink the tumor so you're going backwards you're you're losing ground and it, the tamoxifen is not um benign you feel like shit when you're on it your lifts aren't good you're fucking up your off season ever resorting to that you're better off having suboptimal igf1 than ever pushing the envelope so far you get the gyno and then have to use the tamoxifen to tim off and a lot of people are like but my doctor says that the gyno is permanent and I need to have surgery. It's like if you've had the gyno for a year, it's fibrous and permanent. Now, at what point between one day and a year does it become permanent? Fuck if I know. That the smart thing is as soon as you detect it, fry it. But if it's new gyno, you should be able to fry it. 
I once had a situation where it, getting feedback from this client was like pulling teeth. So I had to ask him, are you getting gyno? And he's like, oh, yeah, I've got some gyno. So I put him on tamoxifen. And after six months, the gyno is still not going away. I'm like, this isn't making any sense. So his friend tells me, you know, he's had the gyno since he was in high school, right? So I go to him, I'm like, you've had this gyno your whole life? And he's like, no. You've had this gyno since you were in high school? Yes. It's like, so you realize that the gyno is not from the cycle you're on, right? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, then what the fuck would be the point of using the tamoxifen to shrink the gyno? from the cycle when you've already had it for so long it's got to be fibrous and he's like i don't know i was like all right so you've just got that gyno for life and you need to have surgery if you want to get it removed there's no point in stopping your progress and not using gh just because that you want to chase after an un impossible goal of shrinking unshrinkable gyno if you're going to treat something as a side effect of the steroids you need to be sure that the, the, the side effect you're treating is a side effect of the steroids, not a pre-existing medical condition. So I'm going to say this real simple. If you have gyno, roll back to a safe dose that did not give you diet gyno and introduce 20 milligrams of tamoxifen twice a day until the gyno is gone. You can just then introduce some DHT and then start to escalate your dose back up to where the total load was supposed to be because you know the anabolic effect of the energy of the anabolics is the total load the specific molecule whether it's testosterone primo masteron in theory doesn't really make a difference so i think that covers everything if you've got questions put them in the comment section it's kind of easier for me to answer questions in the comment section than it is for me to predict every single possible question someone has and answer them so if you see a question that you think is dumb in the comments you can just keep scrolling you don't have to look at the response if you want your blood work done get a hold of me um the tap link is going to be in the description box so you can set up for a console and we can discuss how to handle your gyno or whatever else issues you're having have a good one oh yeah none of this shit's real it's all make-believe i didn't say anything i just said <laughs>